I couldn't echo it anymore. We need to look at the underlying problems with cardiovascular disease. It's not a statin deficiency syndrome. And many times it's an iodine deficiency syndrome and other nutritional problems. Now what about prenatal vitamins? I told you women need to be um, treated with iodine before their pregnancy. So the kids, so the babies will develop with normal iodine levels and develop normal brains. Well, you would think prenatal vitamins would have iodine. Here's a headline from Family Practice News within the last few months. Most prenatal multivitamins lack adequate iodine. Um, this gentleman heard my lecture, Mr. Pyle, and he, he was in the Army, and he says, golly, how could that be? And hopefully you're saying the same thing to yourself. How could most prenatal vitamins lack iodine? Only 28% of prescription prenatal vitamins presently contain iodine. The average iodine content of the iodine-containing prenatal vitamins was found to be below the RDA for iodine. And of the prenatal vitamins that do contain iodine, only 15% have more than 150 micrograms, which is the RDA for iodine per daily dose. I say it's a public health di disaster that's unparalleled and ongoing, and nobody seems to want to stop it. Yet they want to push this health care trillion dollar overhaul through when this would cost pennies compared to that. So, iodine, it's a fabulous substance for elevating pH. It's a great alkalinizing substance. The sicker somebody is, generally the more acidic they are. Taking iodine can elevate your pH. An elevated pH or normal pH helps you absorb minerals better, helps you absorb vitamins better, helps your metabolism better, helps you feel better, helps you with energy production. Um, I check pHs on my patients all the time. Its deficiency causes intellectual deficiency, goiter, hypothyroidism, autoimmune thyroid illness, thyroid cancer, as well as other cancers. It's necessary for the production of all the thyroid hormones, T4, T3, T2, T1. The 4, 3, 2, and 1 refer to how many iodine molecules are on that thyroid, thyroid globulin hormone. It's necessary for the production of all the hormones of the body, the adrenals, the ovaries, the testicles. All the hormones of the body need adequate amounts of iodine. <clears throat> and iodine is also responsible for the formation of the normal architecture of the glandular tissue. That includes the breast, the thyroid, the ovaries, probably the prostate, even though the studies haven't been done. And what about cigarette smoking for those who smoke? Well, the problem with cigarette smoking is you, in, you get cyanide into your body. It's met quickly metabolized to thiocyanate. Now, thiocyanate is a molecule that blocks iodine absorption into the glands of the body. And what they found in this study was the mean breast milk of iodine was nearly four times higher in non-smokers as compared to smokers. And I've been telling you, most people are iodine deficient. Now I'm telling you smokers are four times lower than non-smokers, and everybody's deficient. So the most misunderstood nutrient, iodine, its trace element is found in small amounts in the human body. Um, it's usually found in seawater and sea organisms, such as seaweed. And the soil near the ocean can contain large amounts of iodine. Therefore, plants grown in iodine-containing soil will have adequate iodine levels. And I, we know iodine combined with salt when we get iodine salt. So the therapeutic actions of this most misunderstood nutrient is that it is a wonderful alkalinizing agent. It has antibacterial properties. In fact, no bacteria has been shown to be resistant to iodine. It has anti-cancer properties. It can turn cancer cells from rapidly dividing cells that don't stop to normal cells that have a life cycle and die. No fungus has been shown to be resistant to iodine. No parasite has been shown to be resistant for iodine. No virus has been shown to be resistant for iodine. Also, it's a great detoxifying agent for mercury, aluminum, arsenic, bromine, fluoride, plus other things. And it's a wonderful mucolytic agent. Not bad for the most misunderstood supplement that all medical students, all physicians are pretty much told don't prescribe. Of course, they're told don't prescribe and nobody needs it, but nobody's checking levels either. But that's another story, and we'll get to checking iodine levels. So this person is Doc Brown. He was a very smart man. He built a time machine a few years ago. And he says, great, Scott, maybe we should all be using iodine. I couldn't agree with, with uh, Doc Brown anymore. <clears throat> so what are the conditions treated with iodine? Here's a who's who of who's not feeling well and why we need, you know, why President Obama is proposing a trillion dollar overhaul for our health care. All these conditions on this slide can be related to iodine deficiency. ADD, asthma, atherosclerosis, all the breast diseases, cancer of the breast, the ovaries, the prostate, the thyroid, cerebral palsy, COPD, diabetes, Dupuytren's contracture, 
excess mucus production, hypertension, infections, keloids, all the liver diseases, nephrotic syndrome, ovarian cysts, parotid duct stones, peronies, preeclampsia, sebaceous cysts, all the thyroid disorders, hypothyroid, autoimmune, as well as thyroid cancer. Not bad for one most misunderstood nutrient. So iodine's not very soluble in water, and Lugol in 1829 found that when potassium iodide was added to water, it increased the solubility of iodine. He came up with Lugol's solution, 5% iodine and 10% potassium iodide in distilled water. Two drops of Lugol's contain about 12.5 milligrams of a combination of iodine and iodide. He developed this in the early 1800s. Lugol solution it was widely used in, in medicine and just in people in general in the 1800s and early 1900s. Um, it was recommended for almost any condition, including infection, and it was probably the most used medical item before patent medicine took hold. Once patent medicine took hold after World War II, Big Pharma really had no use for iodine since it was such a cheap substance and couldn't be patented. Now, this is what I was using originally in my practice about 17 years ago, SSKI. One drop of SSKI was 50 milligrams of iodine, but I didn't do my homework, and I didn't look at what else was in SSKI, which is glycerin, ethanol, and acetone. Um, and if I would have known that, I wouldn't have used it, and I shouldn't have used it. But I was using starting people at a drop a day, which is um, about 500 times the RDA for iodine. <clears throat> and I didn't see any negative effects with using a drop a day, but I didn't see any positive effects. I would go up to people with 0.3 cc's three times a day, which is about 150 to 200 milligrams a day, again, way above the RDA for iodine. Um, I wasn't seeing negative effects. I just wasn't seeing positive effects with it. Um, I'll show you why in a, just a couple slides of why I wasn't seeing those positive effects with that kind of iodine. So there is iodine in desiccated thyroid or armor thyroid and nature thyroid. There's about 0.2%, and if you multiply it out times one grain of thyroid, you get about 120 micrograms of iodine in it. However, this iodine is organified iodine. It's already bound to thyroid hormone. It ha really has no use for the rest of the body. Um, and that's not the type of iodine we're talking about. So just back here to remind you what the RDA for iodine, remember it's for rats, drugs, and assumptions. It's enough for baby rats to get enough iodine, but certainly not enough for us human folk. So iodine's a rare element, 62nd in abundance of the elements of the earth. It's at the bottom third of the elements in terms of abundance. The reduced form of iodine is known as iodide. It has an extra electron in its outer shell, which gives it a full complement of electrons. This next slide shows you um, iodine, the oxidized form of iodine. You can see here that it's lacking an electron in its outer shell. So iodide, D-I-D-E, would just have an extra electron paired with that one in its outer shell. That's the two differences between the two. What I didn't know when I was using the wrong kind of iodine was the different forms of iodine bind to different tissues. I was taught in medical school, if you take iodine in, that the stomach will manufacture iodine or iodide depending on what the body needs. In my clinical experience, it's clearly not true. We know different tissues can bind to different areas of, uh, different tissues bind different kinds of iodine. Iodine, the oxidized form, binds to the breast, the prostate, and the stomach. Iodide, the reduced form, thyroid, salivary glands, and skin. Now, I know for those of you who are chemistry majors or have a chemistry background, you know, your eyes are crossing a little bit, reduced and oxidized. But the take-home message is if you're going to use iodine in any form, use a combination of iodine and iodide because you'll hit more parts of the body with it. And clinically, people do significantly better with a combination of iodine and iodide versus just using one form alone. So... Every cell in the body contains and utilizes iodine. The white blood cells can't effectively guard against infection without adequate amounts of iodine. It's concentrated in the glandular system of the body, thyroid, the ovaries, the uterus, the prostate, the endometrium. Now, the thyroid gland contains the largest amount of iodine at saturation, um, 50 milligrams. The breasts, the salivary glands, the parotid glands, the pancreas, cerebral spinal fluid, brain, stomach, skin, the eye glands also contain significant amounts of iodine. Iodine is transported across the cell via this symporter. It's called the sodium iodine symporter, and you can think about it like a little car that just drives iodine across the border into the cell. Now, maximally, you can transport 600 micrograms per day of iodine into the thyroid gland. 
So let's think about that number, 600 micrograms per day. That's four times the RDA for iodine. So if you want to maximize iodine intake into the thyroid gland, um, the RDA isn't even sufficient to do that. That's why I say it's for, truly for rats. Now, at saturation, if you have enough iodine head to toe, about one and a half to two grams is stored in the body at sufficiency. The fat tissue stores the most. The muscle tissue stores second most. The thyroid is there for comparison. But the thyroid has the highest concentration of iodine. Every organ and all tissues contain iodine. The first iodine studies were done in the U.S. by David Marine. Now, in the, in the turn of the 20th century, as the population was expanding from east to west, um, there was an epidemic of goiter going on, particularly in the Midwest. And the, the, it wasn't just people that were getting goiter. Animals were getting goiter. Animals weren't growing to the right size, and they were having problems procreating the animals. So the U.S. government was beginning to worry that the population was going to outstrip the food supply as we expanded from east to west. Now, this was particularly evident in the Midwest, where I, where I live, in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. Um, and David Marine was a medical student who wrote a paper on iodine, and he became the de facto um, expert on iodine. The government called him in to look at the animal population and the animal problems with goiter and not procreating correctly. So he knew about the earlier studies from Bussingalt in the 1800s, and he put various amounts of iodine in animal feed, and he looked at the results of the animals. And what he found was a certain amount of iodine would prevent goiter, the animals would grow to the right size, they would procreate correctly, and he published an article on it. Um, and the government asked him to look at people, because people were suffering from goiter at epidemic rate. His first study was Akron, Ohio. Why did he choose Akron, Ohio? Well, number one, that's where he was from. But number two, 56% of school-age girls had goiter at the turn of the 20th century in Akron, Ohio. There was a higher incidence of puberty. The reason there was a higher incidence of puberty was the first tissue that forms a puberty is breast tissue. The breasts have a high concentration of iodine, um, just like the thyroid and just like the ovaries do. And at puberty, a girl's iodine requirements go through the roof compared to a boy's because the boy doesn't have as much breast tissue and, and, the, and doesn't have as much iodine requirement. There was a 600% increase in goiter in girls versus boys at the turn of the 20th century in Akron, Ohio. So David Marine set up two groups of school-age girls, a control group of 2,300 students. No iodine was given. A treatment group of 2,100 students, 9 milligrams of iodine, average daily, for two and a half years. What side effects did he report with over 100 times the RDA for iodine? None. What did he find? Look at the control group studies. 22% goiter. The treatment group, 0.2% goiter. Now, Marine quickly repeated those studies in Michigan and found the same results. Um, within a few years, they introduced iodized salt to the Midwest. Go uh, four years later, goiter decreased by 75%. The United States quickly added iodine to salt for the rest of the country. It was hailed as the first public health miracle, which it was. Adding iodine to salt caused goiter rates to markedly decline. Um, and really, the end of, of the interest in iodine came about because of this. World War II came, then patent medicine took hold, iodine was an inexpensive, non-patentable substance, and everybody thought we were getting enough in salt because people weren't getting goiters anymore. So here's a map of World War I recruits, about 1917 or so, and you could see the whole country is suffering from an iodine deficiency problem, and the black is the worst, but really from east to west, north to south, the whole country is suffering from a, an iodine deficiency problem because everyone's got goiters, and these were mostly men, um, so this wasn't even reflective of the women. This has been going on a long time in our country. So how do you adjust iodine? It's not very common in most foods. Um, it isn't some ocean food.